Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a short explanation as to how water moves across cells. So with that, let's give it a go. So the first thing we have to talk about is the way in which water moves across membranes. So the only way in which water is going to move across membranes is via passive transport. So the transport of water is always going to be passive across cells, and no water pumps have ever been described. Now, it's important to realize that water is a small molecule. Therefore, water can actually dissolve in the plasma membrane and slowly diffuse through it. Now, it's important to realize that even though water can passively diffuse through the plasma membrane, it does so only at a slow rate. Therefore, the cell has to have a mechanism that it can use in order to increase the water's permeability and therefore increase the rate of diffusion. Now, water's permeability inside the plasma membrane is going to be determined by how fluid the membrane is. The less fluid it is, the lower the water permeability. So how does water increase its rate of transport across the cell membrane? The main way is going to be through the pro pore protein called aquaporin. So aquaporin is a pore protein that allows water to move across it at a fast rate. So it's a nice tunnel that allows water to move across the membrane very quickly. And it can allow water to either move out of the cell or into the cell. So what determines water's net flow? So in order to understand this, we're gonna do two scenarios. So the first scenario, we have a tube and this tube is closed off. So it's a closed tube and inside the tube we have water. Now let's just say that inside this tube we have water and this water exerts a specific pressure. And this pressure is equal at all points in all directions. And we can call this pressure PI or interior pressure. Now let's say that there's also a pressure outside the tube that goes against the pressure inside the tube. And we can call this P out. So it's equal at all points and we call it P out. So let's just say that this cylinder is also permeable to water and how will we determine where the water is gonna flow? So is the water going to flow from the inside of the tube to the outside? Or is, is the water going to flow from outside the tube to the inside of the tube? So in order to find out, we have to find the pressure difference. So what is the net direction? We're going to determine it by the pressure difference. And we do that by finding the difference between PI and P out. And when we do this, we get this result. So this is the pressure inside, this is the pressure outside, and when you add these things together, you get this. So what we see here is the hydrostatic pressure difference. And this basically tells us that the net flow of water is going to be from the inside of the tube to the outside environment. So this is the hydrostatic pressure difference. That is going to be the first thing that determines where water is going to go. It is the difference between the pressure inside the tube and the pressure outside the tube, or the pressure inside the cell and the pressure outside the cell or the pressure inside the blood vessel and the pressure outside the blood vessel. So that is the hydrostatic pressure difference. It's also called pushing pressure. So the next scenario is going to be a similar scenario. Instead, we're gonna be looking at a different type of pressure. So what we see here is the tube, and remember the tube has a semi-permeable membrane that allows water to flow into or out of it. And what we see here are these little particles. And these particles are solutes dissolved in solution. So we have a certain concentration in here and a certain concentration outside. So what you should notice is that the concentration of particles inside the tube is greater than the concentration of particles outside the tube. So how does this affect water movement? Well, we have to look at a different type of pressure called osmotic pressure. So the uh, inside osmotic pressure is basically the sucking pressure that the tube exerts on the water outside the tube. So osmotic pressure is sucking pressure. Basically, the more solutes you have per unit volume, the greater the osmotic pressure is and the greater degree it sucks water from somewhere else. So this is the inside osmotic pressure. So the sucking pressure that this solution exerts on the outside environment. And then this is going to be the outside 
osmotic pressure. So this is going to be the sucking pressure exerted by the exterior environment on the fluid inside the tube. So what we see here is we can use this in order to determine where water is going to flow. So what is the net direction? You have to add these two things together. And when you do that, you get this result. So what we see here is that this is the osmotic pressure difference. And what we see here is that the net fluid flow is going to be the movement of fluid from the outside of the tube to the inside of the tube. So osmotic pressure is the sucking pressure exerted by a solution. So it sucks water from a place of lower osmotic pressure to a place of higher osmotic pressure. So this right here is the equation for the osmotic pressure difference. So how do we put these two things together? Well, this equation will help us determine where fluid is going to go. So the JV here is the flux of water across a surface. And remember, flux is the amount of volume that passes through a certain area per unit time. LP is the hydraulic conductivity. It basically describes how well water can pass through the membrane or wherever it's going. And this is just a proportionality constant. OSM is the osmolality of a solute. And PX is the hydrostatic pressure. So when JV is positive, water flows out of the cell, and when JV is negative, water flows into the cell. So how does this apply to cells? Well, in order to understand that, let's say we have a cell inside a beaker, and this beaker is filled with solution. Now let's just do scenario number one. So in this scenario, we have two variables. We have the hydrostatic pressure, and we also have the osmotic pressure. So in cells, it's important to realize that the hydrostatic pressure difference across the cell membrane inside our body is going to often be zero. And the reason why is because if the hydrostatic pressure difference wasn't zero, cells could be damaged. So therefore, the hydrostatic pressure outside the cell and the hydrostatic pressure inside the cell in our bodies is often going to be zero. The main thing that's going to determine water movement across a cell is going to be the osmotic pressure. So in our first scenario, we have the osmotic pressure higher in the beaker. So what does that mean? So this means that there is a higher concentration of solute in the beaker than it is in the cell. So the osmotic pressure is higher in the beaker than it is in the cell. So where would water move? Well, what would happen is, is that water would move from the cell into the beaker, causing the cell to shrink. And the reason why is because water always moves from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration. So in other words, water always moves from an area of low osmotic pressure to an area of high osmotic pressure. So what if we were to reverse it? So if we were to have a low osmotic pressure outside the cell and a high osmotic pressure inside the cell, the cell would expand with fluid because once again, water moves from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration. And therefore, water moves from an area of low osmotic pressure to an area of high osmotic pressure. So remember, the two main rules... Water moves from a region of high hydrostatic pressure to an area of low hydrostatic pressure, and water moves from a region of low osmotic pressure to a region of high osmotic pressure. So that equation is going to be incredibly important for you to determine where the water is going to move. So I hope this helped you understand how water moves across the cell membrane, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.